there's been some changes in our attitude and the way we do things and the way we think about things and the way we talk about things Mm -hmm. that are because of the books. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Coffee Break Podcast, where our mission is to share business ideas, practices, and strategies while we enjoy a cup of coffee. Today's guest is the one and only Levi Gray, uh, the twin brother of Sam Gray, who's been a guest on the podcast multiple times. We won't decipher which one's better or worse, but it's that we'll leave that one up for you to decide. Before we get into the conversation, though, I do want to encourage you to share this podcast episode with somebody. The information we're going to be sharing today is regarding a book club that we've been doing in our organization, and we've talked about it a couple of times. We've also referenced it a lot in other podcasts, but we're going to be talking about some of the lessons learned, some of the things that we're trying to adapt, and the way that we're implementing the ideas into our organization. Somebody that you know, including yourself, hopefully will get something really big out of this today. So share it. Uh, Hit the share button wherever you're watching this. If you are listening to it on your podcast platform, send it over to somebody, message it to somebody, post it on LinkedIn, get the information out. We believe that it will help somebody else as well. And we definitely appreciate you sharing that and all of the feedback that you give us for these episodes. If you would like to find out more, maybe somebody sent this to you and you're going, well, how do I get more information about this? Check us out at lockdoc.net slash podcast. All of the episodes are available there and all the links to subscribe are there as well. We do this in audio form as well as in video form. You can find them all on YouTube and Facebook, so check that out. Thank you very much for joining us today. Levi and I are going to jump into the conversation about our book club, so grab a cup of coffee and get ready for the conversation. We got so much to say. We got a podcast to make. We're sipping on lattes, and it's time for a coffee break. It's time for a coffee break. Oh, yeah. Welcome back, Levi. Good to be here. It's good to have you back. I feel like, uh, when's the last time that you were on the podcast? Oh, I mean, it was a couple months ago. Yeah. It was... Um, what were we talking about? It was the book club. Oh, we were talking about the book. Well, yeah. let's talk about the book club again. Perfect. Sounds great. You like to talk about book books, club right? Revamped. Yeah, that's my favorite thing. We also a couple of weeks back, a couple of episodes back, maybe uh, we talked about the list of all of the books that we've gone through so far yep. in our organization, mm-hmm. uh, and and kind of documented that and how that how it worked. So we'll reference that as well. So today we'll talk probably less about the books that we've gone through mm-hmm. and more about the structure, lessons learned. Yeah. kind of how the thing has ebbed and flowed mm-hmm. through the process. Sure. That'll be kind of the fr- framework today. So, And, and for yeah. those that are watching or listening, uh, the way that we want to try to approach this is trying to continue to share our journey. We have established a, uh, a voluntary book club in our organization. We'll talk a little bit about the structure around that, but we, we've established a voluntary book club in our organization that is on a monthly cycle. And uh, we have, uh, you know, a good amount of people, I feel like, mm-hmm. that are participating in it. And we have had people come in. We've had come, people leave through the process. So we want to talk a little bit about how it's worked, some of the things that we've learned, some of the things that worked, some of the things that didn't work, some of the things that maybe you would want to to try out or, or improve differently if you were going to do this yourself. Yeah. I really think that it's an awesome thing for any organization, if it's a business, if it's a community group or whatever, mm-hmm. to have as an element uh, for multiple reasons. Yeah. And we can, we can kind of dive into that in just a little bit. But that's going to be the kind of topic of conversation today. Are you ready? I'm ready. I was born ready. Now I'm just going to stare at you and wait for you to talk. Sounds good. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Levi has been uh, been with us for for quite some time. He's been a guest on the podcast multiple times, and was really fundamental in the uh, origination of the initial podcast. I got a uh, an, I had a Google Photo alert come up uh, last month, I think, because that was when we were doing some of our test mm-hmm. recordings yeah. back in 2018 or whenever it was. Uh, which, by the way, you know, we're celebrating three years coming up soon. I think it's three years of podcast, or maybe it's four. I don't even remember now. Yeah, I guess it would be three. three. Since yeah, uh, and and close to a hundred and fifty episodes. Wow, that's incredible. That's a lot of episodes. It's a lot of jabbering. Yeah. So let's jump into it. Okay. Uh, book club. So tell me a little bit about uh, the structure 
so far some of the things that have changed sure. from when we originally started to kind of where we are now? Yeah. So, um, so the way when we first started, the structure was set up um, basically that ev- we would pick a book. Mm-hmm. We'd have four weeks ultimately to read the book. We would meet together once a month uh, on a Thursday at five o'clock when our office is closed. Yeah. Uh, and we would have basically two hours of discussion um, and uh, kind of encouraging everyone to participate, everyone to listen, everyone to speak. Um, and uh, we would just talk about kind of uh, the main focus of, of it is to talk about not just the ideas, but mainly uh, how can we practically apply this book to our company. So kind of uh, getting down to the, the nitty gritty details of uh, what this book means, not just in general, mm-hmm. but to us. Yeah, and admittedly, prior to uh, us starting the book club in our organization and being a part of a couple of other uh, groups that were going through some books together, I've always kind of done this on my own, um, and I'd never really been a part of a a book club that would read fiction or whatever. So my idea of the book club was get the contents of the book and figure out how to apply it. I guess a traditional book club is... Let's talk about the author, maybe stay within some type of a niche or whatever through the process. Yeah, I, I think it depends on each – I think each genre probably has a different format of, of mm-hmm. the book club. Uh, you may have some kind of philosophy book club where they're purely talking about the ideas, what do they mean, mm-hmm. working through it. Then you've got your fiction ones, which are probably like – you know, uh, how how do we feel about this or that? What with the decisions that they made, mm-hmm. and I think those uh, there's a lot of overlap there. I think all book clubs share some of those aspects of um, I, analyzing the ideas, um, but I think for us specifically, um, it comes down to taking these books and using them. Our our biggest goal is is ultimately efficiency and improvement. So how can we take these books and make them uh, make our organization better. Or, I mean, and an alternative would be we go through a book and say, you know, we disagree with all of these things and this is something we want to run from. Uh, But it's either way, it's giving you some type of a context to say the, this is a language that we can use this. This is a, uh, this is a vocabulary that we can use. We can all be on the proverbial same page as we're marching through whatever it is that we're trying to accomplish. Um, And it's been very cool uh, from a group perspective, to see that play out, you know, we I've got the, these two books here that we've done: Atomic Habits and Four Disciplines of Execution, which I know have been referenced multiple times. Uh, but deep work, mm-hmm. um, the uh, five dysfunctions of a team, yeah. uh, ideal team player, um, leaders eat last. There's a, a lot of books that we've gone through mm-hmm. that you can say, okay, let's get real tactical with this. How do we yeah. apply this and even like the five dysfunctions of a team and the ideal team player, those those are recurring themes that come up on a regular mm-hmm. basis. We yeah. can point back to it and say, well, yeah. we're having this issue. Let's point back to these mm-hmm. five dysfunctions. Yeah. What's rearing its ugly head? Yeah, and I, I think uh, that's one of the big uh, influences that it's had on our company as a whole is it's really changed the way we communicate. Um, even sometimes jokingly, like we have ideas that, that will be repeated in the book, mm-hmm. um, and jokingly sometimes we'll we'll th- we'll repeat those phrases. Um, but what it, kind of it, jokes do you make? You know, like well, the most recent book was "Meetings Suck," right? So you know, somebody shows up to a meeting five minutes late, and it's like, you know, it, it says, "Hey, we don't care about this meeting," mm-hmm. and so the joke comes up: somebody shows up late. So I guess you just don't care about this meeting, huh? huh. So you know, it, and even in joking, it shows that it's really influencing our culture. That those ideas are being spread and, and they're being a part of the influence. And there's also even instances where it seriously does impact our organization and we can we can talk about those things in the context of the books. Um, but it's showing that it's not just some meeting that we do yeah. that everybody forgets about. It's just something that they do just to do. But it actually 
is making a difference for better or or for worse, you know. Yep. But it's making a difference, mm. and I think that's that's the big thing. So the last book that we just wrapped up and we just met last night um, and and discussed it was a book called Meeting Suck. Yep. It was the shortest book that we've done in the entirety of the series. Yes. Um, which I was wanted to point. I was I wanted to circle back and I I grabbed this book just a few moments ago to look at the number of pages. It's because it seems like a majority of the books that we've done have been around the two hundred and seventy five yeah. mm-hmm. page. Yes. Uh, just from a context perspective. So we're not going in. You know, we I went with a, where there was a group that we went through the seven habits of highly effective people, mm-hmm. and it was like a six hundred page yeah, book and. It took a long time to digest, and it was it was a just a really big concept book. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's kind of where we're we're hanging around. If you're on an audible, uh, an audio book type thing, it's a about a six hour read yeah. type thing. The meeting suck book was two hours. Yeah, it was a two hour read, and it was you know a very very short book, which some said could be could have been a pamphlet. Mm-hmm. But anyways. Um, <laughs> the but the the whole context around it and and from an application standpoint as an organization we want to always challenge why are we doing things and how can we make them better yeah so a book like meeting suck was about meetings don't actually suck but maybe you suck at having meetings yes. so let's take the the fundamentals that we're learning in this book and then figure out how we can apply it in our organization to make our meetings more impactful more engaging yeah. more fun, fundamentally sound so we can now ha- utilize this as a playbook to make improvements in our organization. Yeah, yeah, and I think to your earlier point, uh, there were a lot of things in that book that we were that we just said, you know, that doesn't really match with our organization. We're not at that level yet, mm-hmm. um, but there were a lot of things that really stood out for us and said, hey, we're we do see some of these issues in our meetings, mm-hmm. the issues with engagement, issues with people uh, that are there that probably shouldn't be there, or at least they. They don't feel like they should be there because they're not putting anything in or getting anything, anything out. So mm-hmm. we had to really ask ourselves and have uh, hard conversations uh, about, well, what do we do? What, how, what is it supposed to look like? How can we achieve that engagement? How can we scrap the way we currently think about all of our meetings? Um, and, and I think that, to me, that's the, um, that's the prime example of of, of the benefits we get from those book clubs, those kind of conversations. We understand the frustrations HOA board members and property managers face when deciding the best solution for their HOA and pool security. Should we use a keypad, hand out keys, or install a key card system? Do we even need cameras? These are some of the questions that are difficult to navigate, and we're here to help. At LockDoc Security, we've spent over 20 years working with homeowners associations and property managers to find a system that best fits the pool and HOA needs. Camera systems for the front gate or front entrance, key card systems for the pool gates, or simply updating the gate so that it meets safety and code compliance. We like to take the guesswork out of the process to answer any questions and help find the right solution. Our mission is to help you protect your people and your property and that includes pools. Contact our team today to schedule your free consultation for your community. The book club probably is less about the book club and more of a avenue to create a larger level of engagement for improvement in our organization. Mm-hmm. So, because I, I, you know, I, I try to, when we have these conversations and especially these podcasts, I'm trying to put myself in a position of if I'm listening to this podcast, I'm like, okay, what's the application here for me? What is my takeaway? Sure. And that's one of the big, I, I believe one of the big factors here is a book club for a lot of people, especially in the service industry are like, I'm, there's no way that I'm going to get people to, yeah. to do this. Well, I, I would argue against it just in the simple fact of if you, are utilizing it as a tool to create improvement in your organization. People are excited about that, yeah. right? And uh, we were just having, a, a, in a previous podcast, we were talking about, um, Aaron mentioned it multiple times, about people are driven by progress. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is a, 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 a factor in, in just humans in general. Yep. So if you are now creating a platform and say, hey, people that want to make progress and create progress in our organization, let's all get together and do that, yeah. then now – you and, and it just creates a whole different conversation mm-hmm. to, to move towards that. Yeah, I think um, there is a, a tendency to see a book club as, as an academic, subjective, like 
kind of thing that's not very useful for mm-hmm. someone who's just like, I'm just trying to do my job. But I, I think everyone to a degree, we read every day, you know, even in the service industry, we're constantly looking up solutions for things and we have to read to figure out what does this mean? What is that? And I think the biggest thing is understanding that uh, what we want is this marketplace of ideas, right? So we mm. can either close ourselves off and say that our ideas are the only ideas that are important, or we can create a space where we're bringing ideas in and we can say, we can have open discussion and do these ideas fit with us or do these not fit with us? Are they good ideas? Or are they bad ideas? And as we do that, we're, we're making ourselves better. Even when we say, no, those aren't good ideas because we're, we are, we may have not known that wasn't a good idea. And now we're even more poised to defend what we think is good, what we think is bad about our organization. And so the key to every organization is I think keeping it practical, keeping it, uh, the the other extreme is a book club can tend to kind of fill that role and, and become a yeah you know I think this and that and this and that and I think this is a good book because mm-hmm. blah 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 and then everybody goes home yeah and it's just like well I could have went without that yeah kind of along the meeting suck line like that I didn't get anything out of it but the key is figuring out how to take this book and whittle it down to like nuts and bolts what does this mean for us mm-hmm. um, and I think we had to learn that as we went along the book club, but I think we've slowly achieved that in, in the conversations. And I think we've had some really good conversations out of it. So let's kind of dive into that understanding how to, how to facilitate a conversation around it, around the book, around the concepts, and then create a, uh, effectiveness for action, right? Let's, let's take what we're reading and then actually put some, put some feet behind it. Uh, and I think when we originally started, uh, we were struggling with trying to fill that out. Yeah. And we also, when we started, we, we introduced this. I mean, man, we had 20-plus uh, people jump on board and say, hey, I want to I want to participate yeah. in this. And over time, that, that number has dwindled down a little bit, or at least the yeah. people that are showing up to the discussion. Yeah. The books are still getting uh, uh, dispersed and distributed. Mm-hmm. Uh, we still have the same number of books that are going out. But some of the folks are not coming to the discussion. Yeah. How, what, do, what is your take on that? And, and what are the lessons that, that you've learned through, through this process of how you've seen those numbers decline or sure. kind of the participation? Yeah. Um, and I don't think there's only one factor to that. I do think really any, anything we do over time will slowly start to lose its uh, shiny factor at the beginning, you know, and, um, I think there's something to that, but I think mostly a large portion of what caused some of the drop off we see happened whenever whenever COVID hit, and we mm-hmm. started moving to remote meetings instead of in person meetings. Sure. Um, so that's when you saw the you know we had everybody in a room, we were enjoying some food together, we we were connecting, uh, and then you could look someone in the eye and have the conversations, have a stare um, down. Yeah face-to-face meetings, which meetings talks about. Mm-hmm. Um, but once we move to remote, um, y- you get added complications mm-hmm. with, you know, starting it, transitioning, who's talking, muting people, mm-hmm. all that stuff. And uh, even on a small level, if someone's fine with those types of meetings, those can still add some complications. And I think I think people maybe felt less engaged in those settings. Mm. Um, and so it's, it's harder to, to grab somebody in the, in the remote setting. Um, and it's also, it's the harder buy-in because if I'm in a, if I'm in a zoom meeting, you know, in, in my office, like I didn't go anywhere. I just clicked a button. So I didn't, I didn't do anything really to kind of pay for that transaction, I guess you could say. But if I had to drive to the office or stay at the office and go into a meeting, I'm there Mm -hmm. and we're all kind of, yeah, we're all kind of looking at each other like, all right, we're here. Mm -hmm. Um, You, you took the time and you invested the time into this and now, now let's earn this time. Mm. You're more engaged because you've invested the time. You've removed some of the the distraction components. Exactly. I think that I I would agree with that. Uh, um, it, it is more complicated, and I've I've participated in some small groups and different things like that. Where uh, when when you're in a group of people and you've got people that are on mute and all that, it really 
stagnates the conversation. Yeah. It's hard to pull ideas and thoughts out of yeah. people where if you're all there together, the conversation just seems to flow yeah. more freely. Mm-hmm. Um, you may may not censor yourself as much uh, when, when you're doing that. So that, yeah. that is definitely a factor in person as, as best as possible. Now, I do participate in a, a, a two times a week in a virtual call we have a high level of engagement. Yeah. Uh, so a lot, but a lot of that comes with comfortability and, yeah. and, and time. So uh, that you can make it work. It's just it, there's mm-hmm. there's factors at play there, uh, and it, it has been interesting. Like you said, when you had a big room of people, it almost encouraged participation because you just kind of mm-hmm. started at one side of the room and yeah. and the conversation flowed around the big circle, yeah, passing around the microphone. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's a factor of it. Another big component, we talked about this at our, I think our first uh, podcast that we, when we were talking about the book club, was the engagement throughout the month. Mm-hmm. So we had created a Google chat room yeah. that we were using to communicate. Now, if you go back and look over the last mm-hmm. couple of months, that conversation has yeah. died down to just a few. Yeah, I think um, I think that's definitely dwindled, and um, that pr- that is also probably one of our biggest areas that we can probably improve mm-hmm. engagement is. Uh, and and Aaron Beaver mentioned this. Um, some other people mentioned this is that maybe having that engagement helps kind of because if we're if we're if we're completely silent mm-hmm. until the week of, then we start talking about the meeting and and you know. It, People probably haven't even started reading it. They may have. They may have forgotten about it, or they mm-hmm. may just be putting it off. Um, but the people reading it, if they were in there, sharing about it, you know, I think Sergey is probably the one who's probably been, even if it's one comment a week or whatever. I feel like he he'll share. Uh, but those kind of things create a little bit of interest, you know. Yep. And so. It, Arguably, if everyone, if if multiple people are, are getting excited and interested about this book, then whoever has the book is like, oh, maybe they need to crack it open a little bit. This, yeah. That sounds interesting. That sounds cool. And then, so I think for us, a, a way of improvement is just kind of pulling that engagement. Like if if we get people engaged early mm-hmm. and often, mm. uh, even if it's just a little thing here, a little thing there. Where are you guys at? Yeah. What, what are you reading? You know, uh, some positive accountability. Yeah. What, what's your progress in the book, yeah. and and get people on the path yeah. to starting exactly, and and even like doing something like posting maybe the most controversial thing you heard in the book, and get people like triggered, and then and then there's like, oh, now I got to read it because I need to I need to argue with this, or or you know I need to share my opinion on this, and just something like that, just. That's the whole point of the book. Sure. The whole point of us doing the book club again just is to trigger people. Yeah, yeah, really. I mean, if you think about it, we we want to like I'll just use yesterday as an example. Yeah, there were there were some some conversations that were being had mm-hmm. that were like we're questioning what has been done, mm-hmm. which which has some negative connotations with it about well, what was done before isn't good yeah, or isn't great or isn't what we want it to be. So we want it to be better. So some, so there has to be some recognition of somebody didn't do the best job they could. And so, but because that trigger happened, we move forward to have better conversations. Either, either it was good Mm -hmm. and we need to change our definition or, or yeah, it could be better and here's how we can do it. And so when we, when that happens in the book club, that's when, that's when we hit our, premium optimum uh, efficiency of that's what that's what those meetings are for is when we get to that point so I think the triggering is is getting someone passionate about it like yeah. whether it's disagreeing or agreeing when that decision the discussion happens it leads to people investing their opinions and their passions into that area and as a result our company can move forward because mm-hmm. Because every person can contribute something to this organization. Yeah. Well, I think the investment part is very interesting. I, um, I, I'm a very impatient individual. I want things to happen right now. Yeah. Like, let's let's get this. Let's okay. So it. so we talked about it. Let's fix it. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, but the the intriguing part over the course of time has been almost the investment of ideas and letting them kind of simmer for a while mm-hmm. and then you see them pop up months down the line yeah. right so my impatience says we we did this book we finished it up yesterday we had a conversation about it so let's make a change tomorrow yeah uh but 
the the I think some of the biggest values that we've had have been the ideas that have simmered, and then you see them rise up months mm-hmm. down the line because people have put a lot of thought into yep. it and said, okay, yep. hey, Atomic Habits taught me this. I'm going to apply it here. Yeah. Four Disciplines of Execution taught me this. I'm going to mm-hmm. apply it here. Deep Work taught me this. I'm going to mm-hmm. apply it here. And then you start to see those ideas really flourish and the organization to start to morph over time. Mm-hmm. And then people can go, oh, I see why we made this change yeah. based off of this yeah. factor. And it, <clears throat> I've heard this before that that – um, you are accumulation of you know all of the people that you interact with on a day to day basis, um, and I think the same thing works for the books we read, the ideas we talk about and discuss. Uh, is that we we're really kind of building on e- each of these books that we've talked about, from Leaders Eat Last all the way to Meeting Suck. We're building discussions and ideas uh, that help us to. Mold, morph and mold who we are mm-hmm. you know um, I would argue that if we went back in time and did and did no book clubs from here to now mm-hmm. you would see some stark differences in the organization I'm not saying we'd be completely different sure but but there's been some changes in our attitude and the way we do things and the way we think about things and the way we talk about things mm-hmm. that are because of the books and the books they 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 they're bricks in this building that are that are being built up and so it's it's kind of helping us to get to the next step to to kind of improve ourselves to grow uh and i think that man like it, it's really cool to think about it that way when we see that 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 conversations change in our organization things that we would have and i think we talked about this the last time things we would have tried to address in a meeting and just tell everybody yeah here's what we want you to do you mm-hmm. know and then we have a book club where people just voluntarily come and discuss these things yeah and people have these realizations that oh hey i think we need to do this yes it's like i said that you know three years ago 50 times but it, it's that buy-in that group discussion that natural way of, it's it helps to shape and form our organization in ways we never could before. Yeah. No, it's very true. So we have now gone through, I, I was trying to just count it up. It's, I think it's been eight months. So it's been eight books or has it been nine? You'd have to go back and count them up. It's either been eight or nine yeah. um, books and months that we've gone through this, and, and we have no plan of stopping. Yeah. Uh, we actually are, are getting ready to start on our next book. Uh, and I was just doing some rough numbers. So we've th- at that rate, we've purchased uh, somewhere around 160 to 180 books total yeah. uh, for our organization based off of the number of people that are participating. Yeah. We've got an investment in of somewhere around $2,600. Huge, a huge ROI for twenty five hundred dollar yes. investment into our organization for growth over the course of an eight or nine month period, and see the results that are happening from it is is incredible. That's from the practical side. So you know, I'm a, I'm a business owner, I'm a leader, whatever. We we invest that into our our team, and what we're going to gain out of that in the long run is going to be incredible. Yep. And each individual is benefiting from it in yeah. their own in their own personal life based off of those uh the, those those things as well so i th- i'd say a minor investment for a really Absolutely. really yeah. great value can you copy this key that's a question we get asked about 3422 times a year and how can you actually be sure that the person who asked that question is supposed to get a copy of that key well we think you should always know who can copy your keys to your business and your home because it could be your neighbor, an old employee, a contractor, or even worse, your mother-in-law. At LockDock Security, we believe in protected key systems, so you always know who has a copy of your key. To find out more, visit LockDock.net or stop by our Charlotte location. LockDock Security, helping you protect your people and your property. What are some other lessons that you've learned from the the book club in a way that you're now trying to to understand or maybe some things that have morphed through through the last eight or nine months um from, from an application standpoint so yeah. you know if i'm a, if somebody's listening and saying okay what what are some things that i need to be mindful of because we talked about having a clear agenda yes. having a timeline all of those things in the previous episodes yes. what are the things that have worked and not worked yeah setting an agenda ahead of time um, is super helpful. Um, setting the expectations is, is very helpful. Um, 
I, w- I would say practically um, w- the biggest thing is communicating properly ahead of time, you know, like making sure that everybody knows, everybody has their books, everybody knows what book it is, everybody knows when we're going to finish it, uh, and, and that they're ready to discuss. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I think one of the biggest practical pieces is ensuring that everyone is engaged, everyone is talking, um, because even if someone just naturally doesn't want to talk, um, if that person doesn't talk in that meeting, then, then ultimately, A, the people listening aren't going to be able to get the benefit of that person's opinion, their discussion. Sure. But also that person will probably feel like they didn't get as much out of it mm-hmm. because they didn't put anything into it. And so even if they, even if it's uncomfortable for them when they speak, when they share, it's, it's, it gives them a sense of, you know, I did something. So I think... One thing is we're still kind of learning is really press in and get everyone to engage and speak. Um, it's easier to do with small, with the smaller the group is. Um, so we had one of our smaller groups. We had six people mm-hmm. just yesterday and uh, they all were, were pretty well engaged throughout, you know, and, and that's because everyone got a chance to speak. So when you get 20 people in there, that's a little more difficult, yeah. um, especially when you have some people who are just more likely to start talking and, and you have some people that have a back and forth discussion um, that can that can change things. So keeping an eye on the, the quiet ones, the ones that are kind of fading into the background and and being willing to uh, facilitate the conversation to make sure that everybody kind of gets a chance to to at least answer some of those questions and give some input. That's, I'd say that's one practical application that I've learned since starting the meeting uh, with Leaders Eat Last. Very cool. All right. Well, if anybody has any questions on it or wants to, to kind of kick around the ideas, again, we I think we've shared a lot of this information, some of the infrastructure as well, uh, but we'll be happy to chat about it even further. You can contact uh, contact us here directly or leave a comment wherever you're watching or listening to this uh, so we can we can uh, respond back to that. But it's definitely a one, one of the things I believe is a high return on your investment. You gain, gain a lot of perspective and yep. man, as an organization, it just is a, a catalyst for growth. Absolutely. So I definitely recommend it uh, across the board. Uh, so the last book we did was meeting suck and we'll take application from that and make mm. our, try to make our meetings better. Uh, the book we had before that was deep work and that mm. was very impactful on yes. understanding uh because we've been in, in an efficiency kick for quite some tr- time trying to figure out how we can be better efficient. And we it really opened up a lot of eyeballs to saying, hey, if we can put in the deep work now, mm-hmm. then we're going to gain so much more efficiency in the long term if we can stop and do the deep work instead yeah. of uh, kind of living in the shallow, which was incredible. And then uh, the book that we're getting ready to start right now is called? Uh, Scrum. Yeah, it's uh, the art of doing twice the work in half the time. Ooh, some more productivity. Yes, yes. Efficiency, it's it's really the main theme of it is just is taking our goals as a company and and basically dialing into an efficient way of, of uh, achieving our goals, accomplishing what we want. So. And breaking the microphone, and breaking is, the not, microphone not is not one efficient. Of those. <laughs> yes, it's not a way of doing that. <laughs> All right, so that's the book that we're getting ready to jump into. Uh, we should be halfway through that um, by the time this this uh, goes out, I'm sure. But there's another book recommendation for you. You know, we really should get our Amazon affiliates link up and running. Yes, yeah, absolutely. I agree. Pennies, pennies we would earn. <laughs> uh, so anyways, thank you for joining us today, Levi. Thank you for uh, coming by and chatting about this again. Thanks and uh, we're going to continue to move forward with our book club. Sounds great. Well, again, Levi, I thank you very much for joining us today. It is always a blast to chat and uh, and give you a hard time as much as possible. Hopefully, we'll be able to get the microphone working after uh, after you've left the studio. Thank you for those of you who listen and watch to uh, our podcast on a regular basis. We actually just recently crested over a huge milestone in our podcast journey of over 20,000 downloads on the audio version, and we're over 50,000 views on our video version as well. It's really exciting. So we appreciate all of the support that you've given us. Uh, find out more by visiting lockdoc.net slash podcast. You can subscribe there if you haven't already, because there's a brand new episode every Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. Thank you very much for joining us today, and we'll see you next time. Next time.